What? Mm, think about buttered squash. You thinking about buttered squash? You have a lot of noises prepped and ready to go, don't you, buddy? Yeah, 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 yeah. Man. Guys, welcome back to Nobody Asked. The welcome podcast. back to Nobody Asked uh, the podcast. Um, starring One day I will have liberation and rights. Starring me. And it will be the day I quit this podcast. Featuring you little freak. Eden's yapping <laughs> periodically. <Feet. laughs> Sometimes I do feel like a little John feet. Little John feet? Featuring. Oh, I thought you were saying. Feature. Why did my immediate guests go to little John from like Robin Hood, like the cartoon? That's the big, that's because the funny, because he's the big bear. This doesn't matter. His name is Lil John. Yeah. Well, okay. little, little John. Okay. Um, you are you been okay? What's been happening? You know, we never talk about that. <laughs> it's, it's, are we you, never... it's are you okay? Okay. <laughs> um, no, but do we never, we never talk about mental health on we, the podcast. There's a good reason. Well, we never ask each other about like how your week was. We never, we never talk about that. Did anything interesting happen? Or will we just now prove why we don't talk about this? Um, I dressed up as the devil for a gig. I did see that. What yeah. the fuck? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, for little to no reason, by the way. It was So the gig is called Good Girls Comedy. And then my friend Annabelle, who runs it, and Tori, who run it, were like, um, oh, we're going to do one-off bad girls. Because like, they listened to the song, I make them good girls go bad. They were like, let's do bad girls comedy one day. And then they were like, oh, yeah, we want to book you for it. I feel like I told you this on the pod last week. Nope. Okay. Um, I was a bad girl. Oh my god! Fuck. I did some bad. Oh fuck! Things. I didn't even upload it. Okay, I'm gonna upload another photo just to use that song. Um, and and so I was like, why would you book me for that? What do you mean? Am I being am I being typecasted here? They were like, shut up, do the show. Um, and so I was like, oh yeah, I'm gonna come as actual actual Lucifer, the devil, yeah. the devil. And excellent. they were like, ah, ha 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 ha. Yeah, it took three hours to do the makeup. I had prosthetics on my face. Um, did the set go well though? Yeah, it was re- it was really fun. Be crazy if you did the set and were bombing as the devil. Dude, it'd be so sad. Yeah, it'd be so. And I think I got like a new. I didn't write one hundred percent new material, but I think I got a new bit that I'll use in the you know on the general rotation. Anyway, general rotation. A moment of silence for our fallen. We're saluting. By we're the saluting way, saluting general rotation. Um, well, it would have already happened by now, but uh, I've got a I've got a wrestling. Got a bit of wrestling going on yeah, this Friday. Yeah, that's so exciting. Yeah, we're, we're so far ahead in pre-recording these that this will be um, – Months This and will have happened a little while ago. But yeah. Years in the future. So I'll be finding out what we're The world would have ended by the time this airs. Yeah. And you people will still be listening. I won't even – the world can end around me as I walk through the streets of Europe. That's beautiful. Is that from Sweeney uh, Todd? <laughs> I thought that was a Lime Cordial lyric. Is that from Lame Miz? That's from Lame Miz, yeah. Um, but guys, we did ask you about your niche encounters with celebrities. Yes. Oh, how'd we'll, your week go? Uh, it was fine. That was all I had. I'm not doing heaps. I'm just working, dude. All right. I'm just working. I'm just saving. I'm not doing a lot. Cool. Um, but yeah, we did get these these fan mouse. We will get to them in a second. We but will. I, uh, we will try to think of our own interactions with people. The only one I can think of, I have two. One of them was when I was in Mykonos at Carvo Paradiso, like this big nightclub. Mm-hmm. And uh, my mate was like having a little uh, romance with this girl for a couple of days and she somehow got us backstage, not backstage, but like behind the DJ decks. And I was talking and yep. we were just getting blasted. And I was talking to this guy for ages and I was like, what do you do? And he's like, oh, I'm a DJ as well. And he was one of the guys from the Sunset Bros. Oh, cool. Who have put out some fucking bangers. And yeah, he's, they were really nice. And they still like react to a lot of my posts. They're just like, this was funny. And I'm like, ah. That's so they nice. Like, they like a bit of dad humor here and there, but they're lovely guys. Um, the only other one, this is a really awkward interaction I had. So I think we've talked about this before, but there, I think I might have actually mentioned this story. I'm going to tell it again. So whenever you see influencers receive like free products, it's usually through an agency that connects brands to influencers. Like they'll match up saying, hey, we've got this product and we can match it up with this influencer who probably has an audience that will buy it. Yes. And so some, it's called Portobello. And sometimes you can go to their office in the city and they might have like a showcase to show you all the new products for a certain brand. And there was a day where Crocs was doing this big showcase. They were really pushing all the Crocs. So they invited a bunch of people to come in. You could pick out a, a pair of Crocs and you could pick out like the little giblet things. I was there. Yeah, I know. Oh. No, this was... 
This was a different one. They had another one. The Crocs loves to give shit away. Everyone Croc- I know, no one I know has Crocs that they have purchased. Dude, I have so many pairs of Crocs at this point. And the thing is I can't even go back and tell them like, oh, I'm actually a women's seven to get my sister a pair because they've just got my size on file. So I just keep getting them. But uh, there was one, so they had the little giblets, right? So you get your shoes downstairs, you go upstairs, you get your little giblets. You get jibbed up. Yeah, you get jibbed up. And like oh, the girls who work at Portobello are really like well-dressed. Like they're very put together. Like yeah. you could mistake them for an influencer. Yes. And there's a girl up top who um, was like sorting all the giblets or as I thought. And I was just talking to her, being really polite. She was being really sweet. She just, like asked me like what I do. And I was like, oh, you know, just comedy stuff. And I was like, so is it like your job just to like sort these all day? Trying to be funny of like, oh. And this girl looks at me blankly and then just walked out. And I was like, oh, that was weird. And I realized, uh, like it took me a couple months later. An influencer? It was an influencer because I saw her videos. It was, I think she's called L Ray. Right. And I felt so bad because I was like, oh, this girl's come in excited to get a pair of Crocs as well, has made really polite conversation with me, asking about me. And my and response like, was- Can so you is, get me a fucking jib? So is your job to sort these? Cool. I'll take the pineapple and the pina colada, please. Oh, so L Ray, if you're out there, I'm-, I'm Terribly sorry for doing that. If you're from Crocs, turn the podcast off. I was really mad because they didn't have any letters like left when I got there and I wanted to write, they have like the letter gibbets and I wanted to have Crocs that said come slut because I don't know, it's just really funny to me. <laughs> and I couldn't make it. I might order this is why I might we, order This, this is why you don't get invited real... to things. I Aiden. know, that's why I was like. That's it's why. like we'd love for you to post our product. And the first thing that they're tagging, they go, oh, Eden's posted something. We're developing a relationship with it. Let's have a look at what she's posted. Come slut. <laughs> Crocs. Written on your Crocs. <laughs> How funny would it be? Um, uh, the wonderful Eloise Eftos was wearing a Crocs yesterday. We were hanging out and she accidentally shrunk one of them by leaving it next to the heater. So one of her Crocs was too tight. It and can it was do like, that? It's like the platform Croc sandals too. Of I've course, got those. They're fucking amazing. Uh, and so she was like, oh, my God, I shrunk one of my Crocs. Because <laughs> it's rubber, I guess. That's really funny. That's <laughs> really funny. <laughs> <You're> like hobbling. <laughs> I'm trying to think of what other experiences we've had at like influence. The only cool one was so we, I don't know why we don't talk about this more. I feel what? like this is like a, a world that people don't get to hear about, like the behind the scenes of events. I don't go to many. Yeah, but the ones you've been to have been pretty good. I mean, yeah. the TikTok awards. Sure. Or For You Fest as they call for it. You fest. Bloody oh. For You Fest. For you, for me, for everybody. Um, the after party when I went, because I, I didn't go to the most recent one because I was <coughs> recovering. Yes. And um, The after party. That after party. Oh, you better say that party shit was suck. No, I was about to say it was so good. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm learning to be brand safe. Yeah, 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 I'm yeah. I'm learning to get invited to th- – it's just the same thing that happens to me in comedy. I keep – I've told you, I keep flying off the handle and calling people – you know, you get sex ma- pests. Yeah. And well, then I go, why aren't I invited to this? Well, I think there's a difference between calling someone out for legitimately being a sex pest and TikTok <laughs> just not having enough canapes at the after party. I think there's a huge no, they difference heaps. there. They, had, they heaps. had heaps. It was the DJ I had a problem with. Ah. Okay. Well, can, let's make that click. So it just sounds like you were shitting on TikTok, but you were just like, the DJ wasn't my favourite. Yeah. I meant to say I didn't have a good time. Um, yeah. But, but I mean, the, the party was great. Actually. They had an after party. What were you going to say? The fir- that one, the first yeah. year was they, sick. They rented out like a time zone and then they gave us all cards that it's were- It's not even a, a time zone. It's well, like- Just a giant arcade. Oh yeah. And they loaded up all our cards so you could play as many games as you wanted as many times. You couldn't get tickets or or like properly win anything. Yeah. So that was awesome. So we're just fucking drunk influencers running around playing games. And it was, it was very clear who- could like wait? Do you mean the first one or the, the second one, one you went to? I I can't remember which one. It the, was the one we went to it was at the arcade, and you were with me, and we wore like the opposite clothes. Oh yeah! I was in like all black, and you were in all white, or swapped over. Oh whatever. yeah, it was e- that one was sick. The even better was the night before after the TikTok like creator camp. The after party for that was it. Have you ever been to Hotel Hijinks? Yes. It was there. Yeah, and yeah. we could go and play whatever thing you want, and then that'd be awesome. And then it was like a big dance floor with like live performances that were actually they, fun. They do do some really good, Sony does some great events. Yeah, I bet. Sony for some reason will just be like, welcome to the event. Also, we got you a custom embroidered dressing gown. And I'm like, okay, I don't know where I'm going to carry that, but Sick. thank you. They'll just give you things and it's fucking amazing. Yeah, amazing. Um, I remember there was one, 
I'll say it. I don't well, – they're not going to work with me. Donut King did this event like three years ago. Yeah. And this is when I was first starting out on social media. This was maybe like the third or fourth event I ever went to and I was like really excited. Mm. And they, they, I went to the address and I'm trying to find it. It's like in this industrial area. And then it was like literally in like a, a small warehouse. But you know what it felt like? It felt like the Willy Wonka experience that they did in Ireland where it's this giant room and they do not have enough decorations to If you're going to get a warehouse, sort of you got to have big thing. You can't yeah. have like one of those balloon arches and call it a day. It was literally like I think they had a photo wall where, you know, you had like a chair you could sit in and there was like a Donut King branded chair. And then they had another station where they had all those donuts on like the pegs. Yeah. That always freaks me out because I'm like, how long have those donuts been sitting there just out in the open? For sure. And then uh, the the big thing that we were all waiting for was there was some other influencer who was getting taught how to make a cocktail and they were live streaming on Donut King socials and she had no idea what she was doing. And I was watching this and I was like, oh, okay. Not all of these are great. And then I left. Donut King. Okay. If I wasn't, if I wasn't a comedian and then if I wasn't a costume or set designer, if I, then, you know, if I had my like fourth or fifth choice, I would, I reckon I'd excel at being like influencer party, like promotional event thing. Cause I, you, I maybe it's only from being at them as a guest. You just go like, Oh fuck, I could do this so much better. Like the photo walls, no one wants to do it with, I know you have to have promotion, but when it's just like, so obviously like it feels touristy almost. Yeah. It's like no one wants to do it. Like you got to get one that it's almost like the makes brand. you look cool or like get yeah. a swing or something like, you know, when it's like fun and like people actually want a photo with this thing. It can be branded with whatever brand it is, but it's like no one wants to just stand next to this big like sign that says so like you, yeah. they went to the this, the this, and then also like you be, like take the best bits of that brand. Like Donut King, they could have – you know, you know what the best part about going to Donut King? See those little fuckers get made, put into the, you know, mm. the, they go bloop, 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 and then they get turned and then they get put in that thing and then they get cinnamon. It's great. It's a wonderful time. Have something like with that, you know. Why are you making cocktails? See, I'm the opposite. I don't. I think if someone put me in charge, I would treat it the same way I treat any time the boys come over. I think I have chips. Everybody that starts kissing do. on the mouth. Yeah, everybody starts kissing. <laughs> we explore each other's bodies. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if you guys are actually interested. If you if you have any questions about, <laughs> like, remember you said it was like a uh, episode about like you know minor celebrities. We're like, yeah, it's us. Yeah, it's us. That's it's what we're about us. About. If you guys have any questions about influencer shit, I don't know if they're interested. If you are, like, if you're like, how does this work, or what's this person like, feel free to ask. We might not answer it, but we might. We just might. Also, I was thinking about minor celebrities or like even major celebrities. There's so many, especially like that are in our own industry, that I've met, but like, you know, when you meet someone as a sort of like you're just at the event with them, and you, I'm so like so committed to not being a, a fan, like just yeah. being like, hey. Like there's so many people that I've been in the room with that I'm like, I will never even tell anyone that I was excited that I met you. Interesting. Because I don't want, like, especially on a pod, like on the podcast, like there's people that I've been hanging out with recently that I'm like, this is fucking awesome. But I'm not even going to say it because I want to seem like I'm not even excited about it. Because I'm like, yeah, well, they're just there, okay? They're just people. That's what happens when you're a working comedian, right? Yeah, you have yeah, colleagues. Yeah. Like I want to feel like they're – or seem like they're my colleague. Um, I am – I've got a big shit in my pants <laughs> <laughs> as we speak. So do you, you do get very starstruck? No, but I'm like – you know it what? I don't get – like It, I don't it get sounds s- like it consumes your social interactions no, no, to no, the no, point no. where you're like, I'm so starstruck I cannot mention that I've – no, no, no. It's not starstruck. What it is is because I'm like completely normal around them. Like I'm like, this is so cool, but I get really like sentimental, if that makes sense, on the way home. Like around them, it's super cool. But on the way home, I go like, oh, my God, I'm doing it. Like yeah. the people that I'm around all the time, like I'm standing in a room backstage somewhere with this person and this person and this person. That's fucking crazy. I can say one. It's just funny. And it's just like this is ages and ages and ages ago. Like I was um, emceeing a gig that Rove was on. Oh, cool. And I was like I'm, I brought him up on the stage by being like, 
everyone, your next act is his first time and he's really, really nervous. <laughs> <laughs> because at, at one stage, like, because you're like, oh, you're not going to get this person offside. Like, yeah. what is, because like, it's like, what is Rove going to do? Like, you know, he's so beyond like mm. being invested. Like he does stuff in the scene still, but I'm like, he's not going to care. Mm. Like I have nothing to lose. I think it's thing. funny. Yeah, exactly. And I was like, people would be like, maybe some people would be scared to like, oh, what if I get him offside? I'm like, nah, he doesn't care. The worst that can ha- like the be- the only thing that can happen is that he like doesn't talk to me or it makes him laugh. Like it's a cool risk to take. Yeah. And he loved it. He was like, that you're so stupid. And I was like, sorry, because I was like, after he came off, I was like, I'm sorry. I thought it was really funny, but if you didn't like it, he was like, that's awesome. Yeah, so nice. I was like. He's really scared. Shout out Rove, friend it's of the pod. Rove McManus. Rove McManus, friend because of the pod. I was, and backstage I was like, I was just cheeky to a man that has hugged Beyonce. Oh, okay. You know? Dude, I don't get, I don't get celebrities. I don't get starstruck. Like, I don't know what it is. I've never got it. But is it, the, does it the, feel the, cool to be alongside people? Nope. No, I don't. I don't care. So if you care. did, you wouldn't be uh, proud Dude. of yourself. If What about when you did like the, like Teddy Swim stuff? You're like, this is, this is cool that I get to do this. Yeah, no, but I wasn't sitting, like, I don't get enamored by celebrities. I, you know what was cool about that was, like, that I became friends with him, that he was like, That's hey, do you want to come back? But I wasn't, I wasn't like, I'm friends with a famous singer. I was like, I'm friends with a cool guy who fucking has tequila who, shots with me. Yeah, but it's like, but someone who I respect their work. Not like, this person's famous, but it's like, that's so cool. I really love what they do. And yeah, now I get to but I just, I think it's because, hang out with them. I think it's because when we go to events like premieres, and you know, the premiers, they'll have like a Margot Robbie there, a Chris Hemsworth, Zendaya. Austin Butler's, you know, yeah. he's at all of them. But um, I'll just, but everyone, f- and look, I'm. this is not me trying to be like, I'm living in the moment. I just gen, like when people pull out their phones because Zendaya walks by and they want to take photos, I just, I don't care. That part of my brain just doesn't go. It's like, oh, cool. I yeah. just, I don't, I don't need a photo with them either. I don't know what, I, I'm not, this come across. You're living across in the as, moment. Yeah, it's coming across as I think, I'm like, <laughs> I don't. I'm not really interested, no, but, but yeah. I've never got it. It's just not a part of my brain that's ever like, holy shit, holy shit. I'm just like, oh yeah, that is that person. In the same way, if someone pointed out my uncle across the road, I'd be like, oh, that is my uncle. That's weird. But it's, I yeah. I didn't expect but, to see him here. No, but like you can be stoked about like getting to meet this person. Like if you, again, if you are literally a fan of their work, like what's your favorite musician ever in the world? Beethoven. Shut up. What's your favorite actor? Comedian. Um, Give me someone that you- Beethoven the dog. From the movies. <laughs> Give me someone that you appreciate work. I really like some of Kevin Spacey's recent stuff. That's been really good. You're not going to answer this. Some of his, his some, You're not gonna some of the best acting that's come out of Kevin Spacey's life is when he got up in that press conference and said that he was not guilty. That was beautiful. You're not going to give me an honest answer here, are you? No, because I, I don't think I don't think you can because I don't think you can sway me. Okay. You know what? I want you to ask a question. Oh, answer a question. I said <laughs> ask. <laughs> it's like I just did. Yeah, yeah true. <laughs> we'll get to the- we'll get to the, Do you just want me to answer one? I think I just had- I'm pretty, pretty sure I just had a stroke. <laughs> um, you know what? Let me read it. <laughs> Something happened to you. Something happened to you then. Oh God, that really got me. Uh, <laughs> That only happens when TikTok turns on and off the shadow ban on my account. My brain, oh, something just happened. You just got reset like an I iPhone. Just, I just got reset. Um, Can I tell you something really funny? Oh, fuck. All right. <laughs> I'm going to, this, this explicitly saying now, this cannot, this is not a clip. This is not a clip. This is not, you will not clip this up. Guys, someone clip this up and post you will it. Not, oh, please. You will not clip this go, up. Go, go. I was talking about, I one time was like, I need to be reset like an iPhone. And I said it to someone I was in a relationship with. Oh no, I said like, oh, I need, no, it wasn't reset. I said like, oh, I need to like take a screenshot. Like, I wish I could take screenshots in real life. And someone said, oh God, why would I bring this up? Why would I, I, I brought this up. Why? Someone said, that's when I have my fingers in your mouth and your pussy. <laughs> Oh, it's pretty funny. Yeah, it's good. It's real good. If you thought the segue into the next segment was hard before and has a lot harder now, let's read out some of your fan mail that you've sent in about your niche celebrity encounters. And I'm going to quit the podcast. And Eden's going to put one finger in her mouth. And <laughs> no! Um, I like that I act really like. This, this is a. Stop, but I did bring it up. 
Here's, here's a couple. We're going to blast through these. To answer the niche Aussie celebrity question, I met Luke Kidgel and Blake Pavey after a show once and they both smelled really good. That's all. It's nice knowing the people I like smell good. Cute. Yeah. Yeah. Famously wonderful smelling gentleman. Famously fresh out to shower. Yeah. Um, Aussie celebrity encounter Blake and Luke. was in the Colosseum in Italy at the same time as ScoMo. Oh, God. Random. Yeah, what a uh, what a weird place Hello, to see that. Scott. <laughs> he's just up where the Emperor would sit. He's just practicing his little thumb movement, doing the up and down thumb. <sighs> I'm killing it. <laughs> doing a great. Jesus. Who else? Uh, this one's a little bit of a long one, but it is very interesting. Okay. Jai Waitford. And might we oh, say? Oh yeah, hell yeah, oh, hell yeah. Hey, these are just people. These are not our experiences with these people. These are just what people have said. They could be the best person you ever know. Anyway. Jai Waitford tried to steal my ex-girlfriend. She was training at the beach and Jai went over to her friend and her and asked to use their equipment. He then proceeded to ask for a lift home to which they said yes and he invited her into his house for a shower after she mentioned to him um, that this is so badly written out. Um, Fuck, man, use a comma. He invited her in to have a shower after the – and then the girl mentioned that they were dating. God, they've written this fucking terribly. Okay. He then left his headphones in her car, which was a not so subtle move. Then the next day he hit her up asking to train again. Um, But instead she said she would drop his headphones back and instead of her, it was me dropping them off. He came out with it. He came out with a dart in his hand, shirtless. And when I told him it's uh, to not be a homewrecker, he played an unreleased song and said, uh, he never meant to step on anyone's toes. Hilarious. And Played he's like, an unreleased song. That sounds like some Kanye shit. This is incredible. Being like, I know how like I can make this up Like on a Yui boom? I love if he was Did he just, plug the phone into the car? Did I, he, was he like, put the, hey, put those, put, put those, those headphones, headphones on. on. <laughs> I love if it wasn't even like a, a well done song. It was just, he's just recorded like an Shirtless, idea in the voice cigarette. windows. <sighs> hey, buddy. You put those headphones on, and Sorry, it's like my phone what's just this fucking song. My phone just died. Let me uh, let me sing this in your ear. Um, then he messaged me after on Instagram, apologizing for the situation, and said um, that it came off wrong. So, Joy, hey, who hasn't done someone a, a favor and been like, "Oh, this isn't because I want to fuck you at all." Don't. When, let's not act like we're better than Jai Wadeford. Um, <clears throat> the relationship that shit is. No, sketchy. every way I've ever acted around anyone is absolute. There's no way I can um play it off. Yeah, it's it's just to. <sighs> it's either I did or I didn't. Yeah, that's a great one though. Uh, this is a one of my friends sent this in. He's shout out to Jordan. Um, I accidentally bumped into Delta Goodrum at Vivid when I was 16 and touched her boob. On purpose? No, by accident. <laughs> On purpose. Okay. <laughs> I was like, don't they? And he Be has nice written, to Delta. He has, he has written here. Delta. He has written here. It's your good friend, Jordan, so you must include this. <laughs> Ax- an <laughs> accidental <laughs> Delta Goodrum boob touch is crazy. Because accidental boob touches happen all the time. I feel like they're like boobs are like at, you know, just hand gesture height for people or like elbow height. Like, What do you mean hand height? Well, if you like, you know, how like to touch gesture. someone's boob, your your hands have to be like up here in I'm, that creepy position. No, I'm saying like, look at where my hands are right now. Like when you make gestures, or how like, close are you talking to people? Where a gesture like of just your forearm length is touching a tit, like nose to nose. <laughs> <laughs> I, I really want to show you this unreleased song. Can you just listen for a second? <laughs> I really wanted to tell you that show you this unreleased song. You put headphones on. And <laughs> I'm like, sorry. I'm so sorry I touched you. Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, it's God. incredible. Um, we've got some more celebrity fan mail, but we'll leave the rest till the end. Oh, because there, because we'll, 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 we've just we've just put one finger in your mouth, and we'll put the other finger the other later, and we'll we'll finish it off. You're the one who brought it up. Um, it's true. What would you? Oh, I've got a. We've got a couple little segments here. Oh, we do. Well, do you want to? Do you want to fuck Mary Kill? Do you want a Dancing with the Stars or do you want some funeral home names? No, we're doing the Dancing with the Stars next one. Okay. Um, I want to do <laughs> funeral home names. Yes, guys. Our top three this week is unlikely funeral home names. Eden, yes. would you like to give a bit of context before we jump into this? Um, so mine were really shit balls <laughs> hell for that. And um, whose idea was the funeral home names? It was mine. Yeah. Can I say, they, and they're going to know it by now too, 
every time I'm really trying to be like, I'll come up with some segments and I really do. And either they're not good and we don't do them or we do them and I'm not good at them. <laughs> some of them are good, but I'm, it's not my, cause I feel like you're really good at like filling in an answer to a comedic question. I'm not, mm-hmm. I'm not good at like, you know, come up with three funny names for this. I go, ah, but I think you're good at it. So that's why I keep, um, okay. But so I actually got real ones cause that's crazy. It's, I find it also crazier that these are real. Mm-hmm. I also have a story after these. Okay. So this is uh, spelled A A M I G O N. What? A M I G O N. And it's, Am- so it's Amagon funerals. That's a real thing. Am- yeah. Amagon funerals. Ouch. What? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, You're you are, Queen. Here. Yes, you are. Um, this is one I came up with. It's not real. Six feet under and much, much more. It's a funeral home that caters to people over six foot. Very good. For extra large caskets. Very good. Mm-hmm. Very good. Um, so this one called Burns Funeral Home and then underneath this crematorium as well. Wow. Uh, I've got one that fits in with that as well. Yeah. Um, this is what I'd imagine they'd have at the funeral homes during the Salem Witch Trials. It's uh, Outback Burnt at the Steakhouse. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's pretty good. That's really good. Um, um, oh, this one, this one's my favourite in the world. This is a real thing. Ronald McDonald the second funeral home. So someone's name was Ronald McDonald and then they had to have the foresight. And they went, replay that let's with run my it son. Back. And that son was like, my life's already bad enough. Let's just run a funeral home. Yeah. And let's, put our, let's put our name on the home. front. Let's, um, and, it's, and they go, isn't that like the Madonna? And you go, what? Jesus Who? Christ. I've never heard of that. I have uh, Disney on ice. It's a a funeral home where they cryogenically freeze your loved ones and they place them at Disney's Magic Kingdom or Animal Kingdom. Well, you know, Walt Disney's frozen. That's what I'm saying. It's uh, it's Wonderful stuff. Disney on Ice, like the show they have. Yep. But this is where all those Disney adults can get themselves cryogenically frozen. You know how they're all talking about like, you can see there's a real human skull on the second turn of the Haunted Mansion. It's like, yeah, well, it's about to be fucking your skull, brother. Disney on Ice is what I call when I used to watch Hannah Montana while my dad's crackhead friends were around. That might be the best. I genuinely might be the best line that's ever said on this show. <laughs> I've I'm been trying to laughing. find it for just, a while, but then I got it in that moment. Oh, I wasn't even. I, I can't even laugh. That was just. <laughs> that's probably the best thing that's been said on the show. Ugh, a rip. Wow. Um, okay, no, but I have two other things to say. Uh, I saw this other one. It was. How like, do we come back from that? It was a. Okay, no. Oh, I, I, it's not as good, but I do have um, quick drag name. I didn't make it up. I saw it as I was looking for these. My remains, like Myra. Oh. My remains, great name. Oh my god, she can come out like the uh, corpse bride. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Wonderful also, stuff. I was about uh, nine when me and my stepdad sort of started hanging out. Like, you know, he drive to and from school. Like we hang, we do go do things together. I thought you meant like hanging out. Like, yeah, we were in the sand pit together and stuff. <laughs> no, school. I meant like, you know. He was in my math class. Yeah. He copied my work. Yeah. He got really He had a huge behind. crush on one of my friends. So I set that up. Wolves. No, like, you know, we started hanging out like just – just us two and that's nice we drove we were driving over the road um to get home and it was white lady funerals there Mm -hmm. i was like nine and i turned around to him i was like what about hey where are you you gonna find black man funerals what what about black man funerals and we got home and i think he was like to my mom like we got a fucking personality on our hands yeah that's a good one though (laughs) we got it (laughs) do you know what's weird about white it's good if i'm nine you know why do all the white lady funerals directors insist on wearing a fucking indiana jones hat have you seen them? Have you seen, have you seen the uniform? They're all dressed like an angelic Indiana Jones. They dress like, did you kill him? Did you kill this person? Like, they're like. It, it looks, they, the last thing I want is the people organizing my funeral to be the ones who look like a cult that would have killed him. Yeah. Oh yeah. But that's what at any funeral in the church feels like that. But have you seen, isn't there like the slogan, like a woman's touch? Yeah. Do you get to fuck them? Is that what's happening here <laughs> no, they, at White Lady Funerals? You, no, they, they fill up on the corpse. If, if you know, it's like an organ donor, there's two ticks. Organ donor, the white lady gropes you. Do you, you get- The white lady rubs you down. Posthumously 
rubbed down. <laughs> by Remember one when of the we white said ladies. we were going to be more Brad safe? And then we've talked about oh, only heinous things. I, 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 well, I guess I, I, white lady funerals aren't going to be reaching out any time. Dude, can we please try and get a brand deal with, with a white funeral lady home? Oh, my God. Christ. Um, Guys, use our code. <laughs> Nobody asked for 10% off the at the crematorium. Mm. Use promo code buy mum to get 10%, 10, 10% off your first purchase. Pretty good. Um, we got a fuck, marry, kill? We do have a fuck, marry, kill. I've got one. For you, brother. Yeah. What you got? We, I'm giving you. I'm giving you something good this time. Oh uh, yeah. It's it's going to be a moral dilemma because you don't know which one to pick. Oh. We're going with Aussie hunks. Aussie hunks. I hate the word hunk. Aussie I don't think hunks. I've ever found someone attractive that's been described as a hunk. Aussie spunks. <laughs> it's getting worse. It's getting. Aussie, Aussie toy boys. Rip, oh, rip it off like a band aid. Bubble Come butt on. bottom twinks. Well, now we're talking. Aussie sp- <laughs> now we're talking. <laughs> now you're speaking my language. No, come on. We've got TV's Bondi vet, Dr. Chris Brown. He found my dog once. He posted a photo of my <laughs> he dog. He found at the my cafe. dog and then he found this pussy straight afterwards. <laughs> let me tell you that. He posted a photo. I, my dog ran away and then he posted a photo on Instagram with her being like, coffee with a new friend. I was like, motherfucker, that's my dog. That's adorable. Yeah, it was cute. Anyway, yes. Oh, that, was a, that was a horribly heinous comment by me, but it was funny. Yeah, yeah bad. So we have uh, Bondi vet Dr. Chris Brown, Scott Tweedy, and I don't like the proximity of that. Like he's too close. I, I to do. I do know Scott. So yeah. That's... You know. No, we'll see. And the entire Bondi rescue lifeguard team. Oh, see, I don't know about the entire team. Let's go three of them. You can't kill them off. They save people. You can. You, well, that's up to you. Oh, do, I can't like, be like responsible. Dr. Chris Brown doesn't save animals. What happens if he's dead? No one finds your dog. I'm not killing the whole veterinary practice. Are you, well, he's, you think he's still practice? doing? You think he's still doing night shift down at the vet? He's, he's a millionaire. Absolutely. Yeah, because he's so nice. No, he's he's hosting I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out uh, of no, Here. No, he's not. Robert Irwin took over because Dr. Chris Brown went back to help <laughs> the animals. Because there was a sick bunny rabbit. He heard about bubbles. <laughs> the rabbit with a sore foot. <laughs> oh, lordy, lordy, lord. So you um, got Dr. Chris Brown, the entire Bondi Rescue lifeguard team. Okay. Let me Scott Tweedy. I got it ready. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't want to fuck more than one man. Then kill the Bondi Rescue lifeguard team. Oh, or do I marry them? Take me back no, to the no. sweet town. No, no, no. Of no, 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 Everything's going to be all right in the summertime. I have to fuck them all? Um, no, you just fuck one the rest of the watch. <laughs> I'm sure, okay, no, I'm sure, that, I'm sure there's one. In the, oh, I don't know about the watching. Oh, no. It's a polyamorous You said I wasn't going to be able to choose because it was good. Well, they're all attractive people. Yeah. It's, yeah. If I would f- I'm find, a kill very, the bu- no, I'm gonna, very, find uh, it very hard to find fault with a vet, a, a like a bunch of lifeguards who save lives, and Scott Tweedy. Some of them, they, they got that leathery look to them though, don't they? Some of them got like... In like the zinc on the lips is gonna be a hard pass for me. You'll have a not even a pash rash. You'll have a zinc rash for the rest of your life. Mm. Um, I'm so sorry, but I rescue. I'm gonna kill each and every one of them. Cool. So I'm sorry, I just don't. I can't marry them and I can't fuck them. Um, <laughs> marry Chris Brown. I fuck Scott Tweedy. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> Feels crazy to say. Mm. Sorry. You can't do. I'm gonna. Oh yeah. But next one, your fuck Mary kill is gonna be like people we know personally. Like <laughs> I did that last week with my family members. And yeah, but that's absolutely hypothetical. No one can act like it's serious. Oh, you, are you I'm gonna be like, like Dr. Chris Brown is a isn't a hypothetical. You're like, <laughs> well, I'm not oh, gonna no, be like three talking, women you follow. Like, <laughs> what you follow all three of these people? <laughs> no. I'm I'm tossing up between Chris and Scott. I don't want to give anything away because one of them might stop messaging me. Shut up. Shut up, mate. No, no. Ugh. Yeah, well, you happy? I'm out of here. I'm, imagine if I walk off set. That's cool. Uh, Do you want me to read out the last of the yeah, celebrity yeah, 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 before yeah, we get yeah. out of here? Read me a bedtime story. 
Do you know why I got, uh, we got a message just to- Oh, is it your turn? I wanted to tell you a little thing before you read me a story. I, because we got a message on the Nobody Asked <laughs> page from someone, um, the, the same person who said Arseless Chaps, I believe. Um, but they were like, oh, I listen, I fall asleep to the podcast after, like, after I've already listened to the episode. And I was like, could you imagine? We talked about like falling asleep to this podcast is crazy. Cause it's like, oh yeah, blah, 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 blah. Like, yeah. What volume are you going to have that on? There are the, I don't know what moments are waking you up. For me, I, I think regardless of volume, I would have been woken up by the screenshot comics. I'm like, what the fuck did they say? Yeah. That would have haunted me in my dreams. Yeah. When I was younger, my dad took me to a shopping center to watch Shannon Knoll perform. <laughs> He then brought me on stage to sing his hit song, What About Me, by Shannon Knoll. Thanks. To sing I'm, it? I'm glad that he put in his hit song by Shannon Knoll, that Shannon Knoll was singing. I don't know if that's what the song is called, but for fuck's sake, you know which one I'm talking about. Yeah, you type like a Shannon Knoll fan. Hey, you came that bloody song. You know, you know the one. You, you, you fucking know the one I'm talking about. Don't, 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 don't play silly buggers with me. That's pretty good. Shannon Noll bring you on stage to sing to his sing most it? iconic song. Also, it's like, I don't know which song. Well, what did you do on stage when you had to sing it? Wait, do he, bo- he brought the, the kid on stage. My guess is it's like. To be like, oh, like it's a little kid. Head. He's like he's helping. There's a little boy. In the countertop. Like he was, was he like acting? Was he like pointing at him? Yeah, he's like, <laughs> this, is, <laughs> this is the little boy. This is the little boy. <laughs> um, got another one here. Yeah. Magda Shabansky famously from Kath and Kim, came into the restaurant I was doing kitchen placement at and didn't like any of the fancy desserts on the menu, so I had to rummage through a dry store and put choc chips in a little ramekin for her. It's a very specific order. I love a diva request. Just choc chips? Choc chips. No, because I like I like food that feels like you're in the pantry and you can't be bothered to make any food and you grab a handful, you know, the shredded cheese. Yeah, oh, yeah. The chocolate chips and, you know. I'd be hoeing down shredded cheese. You know how many um, raw spaghetti I've eaten? Okay, well, not that. I'm talking like <laughs> not me. A, not me. more than one at a time. That would be crazy. <laughs> like I think bunch. one at a time is weirder. When Just I, like no, when I'm making- I don't want to ruin my dinner. I don't want to spoil dinner No, but later. if I'm making pasta and, I, I, you know, there's one. <laughs> okay, I thought you were just like enjoying- I'm not sitting, Just a piece. I'm not sitting down and putting putting them on a plate. You walk into the cinemas. People have Maltese and chips. You've got a bag of dry spaghetti. Well, yeah. What's that crunching? Sorry, guys. I'm Italian. You know how you know how we do. <laughs> Mamma mia. Yeah. Um, this one. Look. This is all alleged. This is just what stories people have told us. But okay. I do have a follow up that uh, makes me think this could be true. This is what someone else has written. Does cravat wearing wank stain Matt Preston count as a niche Aussie celebrity? Strong start. I was a seat filler at the Actor Awards a few years ago and MasterChef's Matt Preston was sitting behind me, absolutely plastered for the entire ceremony. You were sitting as a, you were a seat filler and he was behind you? Yeah. You're the celebrity, mama. <sighs> well, who, who, whose seat would have they been filling? Oh, like if someone can't make it. Well, no, a lot of them, they do it when they go to the bathroom. So when the TV's on, when the cameras are on, it doesn't look like it's empty. Because imagine how many of those celebrities are going off to do fucking lines in the bathroom. Yeah, are you kidding true. me? Um, he was sitting behind me absolutely plastered for the entire ceremony. Fair play to him. Every, oh, I'm not going to say every, a lot of events that I go to, mm. you, you might have a couple of drinks to enjoy yourself. Mm. Fun fact, a lot of influence events have an open bar. And I would, I'm not saying I've ever done this or I would ever do this or implore people to do it, but I've heard rumours that some people will use those influ- influencer events as a sort of prize, and they use the open bar and then they go to wherever they're actually going. And I think that's disgusting behaviour and that's awful. Yeah. Yeah. Let's keep going. Um, he incoherently babbled away through the whole event so much so that me, a lowly acting college student, turned around and said, can you not... <laughs> to which the award-winning food critic scoffed at me, rolled his eyes and kept fucking talking because of course he would. That's ballsy to be like, <laughs> Can you? <laughs> but it You're is- like, who are you here? But I, I fully believe that Matt Preston enjoys events the way that he wants to enjoy them because famously at the TikTok, I've been saying famously a lot. I got to stop doing it. Yeah. I've overdone it. Uh, he was at the TikTok Awards, I think two years ago. Right. 
and they forgot to turn – he did a little segment with some in, cooking influencers and as he's walking off stage, his mic wasn't turned off yet and apparently they caught his – well, they did. They His mic was caught with him saying, what a cunt of a job. Awesome. Which I, I've got the video. I didn't even realise because I was – uh, I was doing a Matt Preston. I was drunk and I was filming him go off the stage. I'm like, fuck yeah, Matt Preston. And you can hear in the video. Oh, is it almost like you were excited to see a celebrity? Mm, no, I think I was excited to have an open bar. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. So, but you weren't Chris, Hems- Chris the Hemsworth, open bar. Zendaya. That they're not. <laughs> it goes Chris Hemsworth, Zendaya, and then a thousand miles into the air, and then my boy Matt Preston. <laughs> yeah, uh, we got two more. Yeah, I cis male walked into the wrong bathroom at a junction. At, oh, sorry, at a function. That makes sense. <laughs> at a junction. <laughs> I walked in at a, at a Bondi junction. Yeah. Uh, I cis male walked into the wrong bathroom at a function and as I turned the corner, I bumped into 2006 Australian Idol winner Jessica Mowboy and caused her to drop her phone. Before she could even pick up her now chipped phone screen, I told her I loved her in her 2009 film Brand New Day. That's really funny. This person is a Jessica Mowboy expert. Yeah, wow. Are you talking about 2006 Australian Idol winner Jessica Mowboy who starred in 2009 film Brand New Day? Is that the one you're referring to? I love that. They, I love that you met her. This person. I feel like she'd be awesome. She's really nice. Apparently, a lot of my friends like who work in music. Yeah, she she's, seems sweet. Yeah, she seems really cool. Last one. We can finish an absolute milf. <laughs> Gina Reinhardt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, Gina Reinhardt screamed at me because I hadn't controlled the rain at her event. When I laughed with her staff afterwards about it, they explained that she usually controls it with cloud seeding and they'd expected me to arrange that. Um, right. Can you imagine Gina Reinhardt screaming at you for not having the power of a god? What? The rain brings the worst out in everyone and so does being Gina Reinhardt brings the worst out. Yeah. I reckon we finished on that. Uh, yeah. Shout out to the ultimate MILF, Australia's MILF. Can we can we put that on a poster and post that? <laughs> can we get Australia's MILF and then we use that, that really, that that really portrait, shitty portrait that, that someone portrait made of it? portrait of her? Hell yeah. That's what we're going to sell as merch, guys. Australia's MILF, Gina Reinhardt. All right. Bye, guys. Love you. Love you. Miss you. Bye.